We are today going to continue our discussion um, of, of things dealing with induction by talking about this idea of inductance. So, if we think back to what a capacitor was, Had a constant, had a constant electric field, and it held charge. Okay, charges caused the constant electric field. The capacitor held charges, which caused that electric field. That's that's how it worked. And capacitance depended on. Um, just the construction. So in general, capacitance was voltage um, over charge, how much voltage we could hold per charge. Um, well, we're going to have this new thing, inductance. And what we're going to do is have um, a constant I have a constant magnetic field which is caused by a current. So, inductance, we're going to use an L for it. And the inductance of any object is going to be the magnetic flux through that object divided by whatever current is causing um, whatever current is causing that magnetic flux. Now, because the thing that can do this is a solenoid, Solenoids have turns, so what we're going to say is N times the flux through one turn over the current is equal to the inductance. So, this is how we find inductance. It's measured in Henry's. Measured in Henry's and one Henry is equal to one tesla meter squared that's from the magnetic flux divided by an amp okay we're gonna have to know that sum so let's let's do this for a solenoid and let's say that this solenoid um, has area a and in turns per unit length and we want to find the inductance of this solenoid. Now, uh, if we look at it, um, this big N thing, number of total turns, is equal to um, N, number of turns per unit length, times the length of my solenoid. So, I have all of these things. Now, to get the inductance, we need the magnetic flux through the solenoid. So, the magnetic flux through the solenoid is um, B times the area of the solenoid. We know that the magnetic field is going to be constant, but we have to find that. Now, as we recall, um, the magnetic field in a solenoid is mu zero times I times the number of turns per unit length in that cylinder. So the magnetic flux for this, plugging that in, is mu zero times I times the number of turns, current running through it, times the number of turns times the total area of our solenoid. So we've got that. If I want the inductance of a solenoid, the inductance is equal to N times the magnetic flux divided by the current. Well, we already said that that's number of turns per unit length times the length times the magnetic flux, which we just said was mu zero times I times N times the area uh, divided by the current running through our solenoid. Currents cross out. And what we have for the inductance of a solenoid is mu zero n squared 
times L times the area. And we see that that inductance only has to do with the number of turns, the length, and the area of our solenoid. Solenoids are what we're going to use as inductors. But we need to be familiar with doing this process. So let's look at what inductors do. <clears throat> so you're going to have to deal with a rather crummy drawing. Let's say we have wires coming in. and looping around. And let's say we have a current coming into this solenoid. Currents coming into the solenoid. As this current comes in and goes around the first loop, let's say the top of it comes outside, as that current comes in it's going to create a magnetic field, we'll do it in red, B that points downward which is in these other loops. We have a B that points downward. And as time goes on, it, co it, it continues to fill more loops. So I have a downward B that's increasing, which means my change in flux for these downward loops over the change in time is also downward, which means that my induced magnetic field is upward which means that because of this these wires are going to produce a current in the opposite direction um, to oppose that which means I'm gonna have an EMF in this thing that opposes this current coming in this is called self inductance okay as current flows through the solenoid because of Faraday's law, because of Lenz's law, the solenoid produces an EMF to oppose that current coming through it. Um, that's tricky and unfortunate. We use this for a lot of different things, but we need to look at finding a value for that EMF, because if we're going to put this in circuits, and we're going to put this in circuits, we're going to have to somehow quantify what that EMF is. So let's look at this. Um, we know that in general the, the uh, formula for the inductance here is equal to the total number of turns times the magnetic flux over the current. And so if we rearrange things, okay, that's going to give us the total flux is equal to L times I. Well, let's, let's just change this a little bit to make it a little bit easier to deal with. But the flux for this thing is equal to N times I. Now, if we want to get an expression for how much voltage, how much EMF is produced in this thing, we're going to have to take the time derivative of both sides. So D flux over DT is equal to DL times I. That whole function over dt. Well, I know from Faraday's law that this is just my um, the negative of my EMF, and that's equal to L, which is constant, times the change in current over the change in time. And so the way that we're going to write this is the EMF of an inductor is equal to the inductance of that inductor times the change in current over the change in time with a negative sign. So this means that the EMF in an inductor opposes opposes the change in current through the inductor. Okay, that's, that's how inductors are going to work in circuits. So let's real quick just look at a simple example of it. A basic RL circuit. So, I'm going to set it up. Here's our, our basic circuit. We have a battery. We have the EMF of the battery. That comes up. We'll have position A on our switch and position 
um, B on our switch and our switch goes to a resistor R and an inductor the inductor is a little loop-de-loop -loop thing which has inductance L so initially there's no charge running through it so when time equals zero we're gonna put the switch to A and so what we have is the EMF in my battery attached to a resistor R going through an inductor loop-de-loop -loop, L when time is equal to zero current just begins to try to push through this thing and this thing pushes back it's at this moment when we flip the switch that we have the greatest change possible and so we're gonna have an EMF in this inductor that pushes back up against it and when time is equal to zero the EMF of the inductor is equal to the EMF of the battery which means that there is initially no current because of that change so much there's initially no current now as time goes on when time is equal to infinity <clears throat> as time goes on it slowly pushes its way through the inductor when time is at infinity and my current is constant there is no longer a change in my current so the inductor no longer pushes back and at infinity for this circuit my current is equal to um, the EMF of the battery over the resistance that's how it's going to work now that brings us to time equals zero again after after it's been open for a long time we're going to throw our switch to position B in that case we just cut out the battery oh sorry B goes down like this in that case we just cut out the battery we have a resistor R an inductor L and it's hooked up this way now we just had a current running through it supplied by the battery and we're gonna cut it out which means okay initially when time was equal to zero there was a current running through here equal to the EMF of the battery well okay so the inductor had current running through it and it's starting to be turned off well, the inductor wants to continue having that current running through it it doesn't want any current to leave so the EMF in the inductor this time is going to be in the opposite direction which is encouraging charges to move through it and in this case at time equals zero the EMF of my inductor is equal to the EMF of the battery and in that case the current is the EMF in the inductor over the resistance now as time goes on all that energy goes away and so the EMF in the inductor is equal to zero and the current also is equal to zero the thing dies down the important thing to remember for RL circuits is that they want to maintain M -A -I -N -T -A -I -N, maintain whatever current we had going through they resist change before time equaled zero over here the current was equal to zero so it wants that to continue being the case before we flip the switch over here the current was equal to the EMF over R and the inductor is going to do whatever it takes to maintain that over time it will change but it resists that change now tomorrow we're going to get into our circuit analysis and looking at it what we're going to have <clears throat> zero equals the EMF of my battery minus IR minus the EMF of the inductor and using what we just did on the other page that's the EMF of the battery minus IR IR minus the EMF of the inductor which was L times DI over DT we will look at what to do with that tomorrow.
but I think we already know. So, that's it for tonight. <laughs>